Oh, no, no, no. Does he, have to, does he have to go get coffee for the rest of us? Yeah, yeah, I like to call the meeting to order. And welcome Kevin Smith back, our most junior member. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's right, exactly. Um, why don't we go right to the reserve fund transfers, because you're here, and I'm sure you want to get home. <laughs> Jean, do you know everybody? There's really nobody new except Kevin, and I, I think everybody knows him. Jared? And Karen? Davis? Karen, She's the Karen, planning. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So Jared Burns, yeah. Burns? Burns. Yes. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Gene Bubon. So this is a, a request for 5550 for new permitting software implementation. You want to tell us what that's about? Yes. So this is, uh, you probably remember, I think most, many of you were on the committee when I had a special article at town meeting to implement new permit software. Actually, our company that used GMTMS was bought out by the and the GMTMS product was no longer going to be supported. So they were, um, came out, did a presentation, all of the staff was interested in upgrading to the Acela product, went to town meeting, got funding, and a resident raised the concern that it should go out to bid. I should be getting oh, yeah, I put out an RFP. In the meantime, I was out on medical leave for a lengthy period of time, and so this project's been sitting, waiting for my healthy return. So now that time has come, and we're working on implementation, and it's going very well. However, we have a statement of work that talks about the process that we were going to go through to have our permit types work efficiently and smoothly with the permitting software that we're transferring to. So in the statement of work, when you talk to the vendor as you're developing this contract, I, how do you know how many changes you're going to have for a site plan review application, for instance? So we went through the process of, well, what's been the norm with other towns? How many you know, changes do they really need to get this customized? So they give you numbers. We met myself, uh, Leon, and uh, Greg Rosso from IT at Tantasqua assisted with this. And all of the numbers seemed reasonable. However, when we started doing what's called the gap analysis, where it's, they take basically our forms and our process and you sit one-on-one -on -one with the tech person from the company and they figure out what steps do we need. Well, we need the tax collector to sign off or we need this to go to the building inspector in DPW. So as you kind of go through that process of customization, we realize that we're a little more customized <laughs> apparently than some towns, but I think we have a process that works very well and we'd like that efficiency and we'd like um, as many applications to be available for people to apply online as possible. And so therefore we have some more changes. So to get this done correctly the first time, I need some additional funding. So that was the 4,000 odd figure that I put in my narrative. That is for what they call the uh, gap analysis changes. So they provided a quote, which I have attached in your packet. And that came out to $4,050, and that's for an additional 45 custom data fields for our permits. The other side of this is that I need additional funds for the data from the assessor's vision database to be put into a format that is acceptable for Acela to take. So, and we had done this with GOTMS, and in fact, we update the GOTMS permit software on a weekly basis as properties change. Um, we had, Vision had previously written a, I guess, a script for Ann Murphy to be able to dump that into our software on a weekly basis, and it's been working great. We, I guess I just, I didn't think, I didn't know. I'm not an IT person and I didn't, I just assumed we had been doing this all along. Why would this cost me additional money? I need to get the data from Vision into Acela instead of GOTMS. Well, they need to write a script and they need to provide that data to Acela. 
and they won't do it for free. And a seller will take their data and convert it, but they won't do it for free. So it was $3,000, and Barbara, Ann, and I had a conference call with them last week, and Barbara was able to negotiate them down to 1500 because of some issues Ann had had with her software upgrades. So they kind of used that as leverage to, and said, you know, we don't have this in the budget. This is unexpected. Should we have known? Perhaps. When we get an IT person, will I ever have to worry about this again? Not ever. <laughs> so um, I guess you can say, you know, a little bit of not understanding everything that I'm dealing with. I'm a little beyond my comfort level dealing with the permit software implementation. I think I've done a pretty good job getting it to here. Um, sorry that I didn't foresee this, but I really didn't foresee this, and so therefore I would like $5,500 if you'd please, <laughs> so that I can move forward and finish this. Questions? So this is just supplemental to the already budgeted amount. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Did did the SAO not specify that Vision would be charging for this? I mean, I, I can't believe that they wouldn't tell you that they would be charging if you knew that you needed these change orders? Well, no, because the SAO is with ZIT, who is implementing for Acela, the permit software. The, the SAO is not with Vision. So it just says that you will provide us your APO parcel data. So talk to Ian, and yeah, that's fine. We do this all the time. We can provide the APO. Um, it, it gets dumped into my GIS all the time. It gets dumped into GEO. But it was a specific way that they needed to have this formatted and Vision would would not or could not, uh, maybe not could not, would not do it without a charge. And they never specified that, that they would be charging. I, that's a lot of money not to specify. My statement of work is not with Vision, it's with the permit right, software. But at some point, somebody must have notified, somebody must have spoken to Vision, I would think that. We did, and that's when we were told we had to pay. So we've been trying to find a different way to go about this. And um, we've been trying to get the two companies to talk together. I've been trying to get, there were two options. I could get a dump of the data and I could send it to a seller and a seller would give me a quote on what it would take to convert it. Or we could get a quote from Vision, who is the assessor's software provider, who will be the one that needs to write whatever script she's going to need in the future to do those weekly or monthly dumps, whatever we decide to do. So after discussion, it made the most sense to get the quote from Vision to do the, it's their data. They're, you know, they're providing it. They, to me, they should be responsible for making sure we're getting that data in the correct format. We shouldn't be giving the raw data to our vendor to try to manipulate and get into the format that they need it. And then what if it's not done correctly and now our parcels aren't matching up with our permits and just made, for, for us in discussing it, the, you know, our permitting group, we have a group of staff that's working on this implementation. It, was, it seemed to be the logical way to go for us. Would that script be a one-time charge or would it be recurring every year? If, if a seller will work with us to allow us to set it up so that we can automate it in-house, then it should be a one-time or maybe a little additional to do that automation once we get implemented. So we're still having discussions with them about that. They say that most towns provide them the data twice a year and they upload it and there is a charge, but we would rather update on a weekly or monthly basis. We issue a lot more permits than a lot of jurisdictions do. So it doesn't make any sense if we can't upload it in-house. So I'm actually, <coughs> excuse me. Questions. Thanks. Working with the president of the company now to um, see if we can figure this out because it's that's definitely the one the way we want to go that was the way I understood it would be going and he agreed with that 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 was his understanding as well so it's possible for us to do it in house then we don't have to rely on that we are hoping that yes that somehow we are going to develop some kind of script that's going to allow us to do that I think it will be helpful when we get the new IT person too I think they'll be you know a great help because you know, being a non-techie person, I'm looking at this and saying, well, they need it in piped, eliminated format. And I'm not a tech, but it didn't seem that hard. But <laughs> obviously, it's nothing I can do. But you know what I mean? You just, we just had to keep saying, well, if we had somebody in-house, we could take that raw data dump, and they could format it in the way. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Kevin, you're the tech guy oh, here. I was just thinking the same thing. Usually, software has some type of API. You know, here's our interface. Here's how you have to put data for us right. to use it. 
in, in, in their very worst formats, you can use CSV files, right? Right. You download it into an Excel format, and then the other one takes it up from an Excel right. format. Yeah. But I, and then there I, mean, was I, don't, I don't know if this product has that yeah. type of interface or not. Right. Well, they, they don't support SQL anymore, and all I know is we need this pipe delimited format, yeah. and that um, the folks at Acela said, well, you sent me this dump, but you didn't send me a data dictionary, so how do I even know what these fields mean? Right. So there was a lot of that back and forth. So to me, it was just creating a lot of confusion, or maybe you know, they didn't want to send their data dictionary to our vendor. I'm not sure, you know, but it got beyond me to That's try what you'd to... want to know. What, what is the layout of their interface? Right. Because you know, that's what they're asking you. You know what I'm saying? You're just telling them the first 50 characters is the street address. Right. And the next 50 characters is the owner's name. And yes. So on and so right. forth. And they want to be able to just break it down. Right. And that's the process we've kind of gone through. We've taken the spreadsheet and we've told them, you know, which fields we need and, and everything. But without this, we're not getting, without the money, we're not getting the data we need. And they did say that they would complete it and they would send it to us. Um, knowing that we were trying to get funding because obviously the town's been a vendor of vision for a long time but i don't feel comfortable spending money we don't have so does does it include testing so they send you the software will they be involved in making sure the interface works smoothly and making adjustments until it does yes they will have to do that in fact the two vendors started having some discussions today via email and they're going to have a conference call tomorrow and we uh cody Mundell from uh, Tantasco, the IT person, he's been assigned to work with us, so he's been involved in that as well. So, but I've basically taken it as far as I can take it without funding. Any other questions? Is there a motion to approve the uh, reserve fund transfer in the amount of 5550 Just before we get, I'm just curious, what is the balance of the reserve fund? This is our first reserve fund transfer. Okay, I still don't know. I brought the book, okay? Because okay. I knew that you would ask that question. <laughs> Deja vu all over again. It is, right? I'm glad I'm predictable. <laughs> Unless, of course, it, you know it off the top of your head, Barbara, but it's reserve fund. Let's see, 154000 I think we have enough. I, I did know that you would ask that. That's why I grabbed this book on my way out. <laughs> I'll make the motion to approve the reserve fund transfer in the amount of $5,550. Is there a second? Any further discussion? All in favor? It's a uh, six, six, zero, six, zero. Thank you. Thanks, Jean, for coming. You're welcome. I hope it all works out. I hope so, too. <laughs> I'm sure it will. It looks like it's going to be very user-friendly. So for the public and for us. So. so this is so anybody at home wants to apply for a permit, they can just go online, huh? Not every permit, but many permits. Many permits. Mm -hmm. Many permits. Yeah. That's great. That's great. great. That's great. <laughs> Barbara, do you want to come up? Get you people home. I'm sure you've had a long day here. It is a long day. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. It's your long day. <laughs> Uh, I want to introduce you first to Ashley Griffin. She's our new facilities coordinator. Ah, oh, she oh, started last, last Monday. Oh, so she's gee. Very new. And you're making her come to a meeting already? I did. I was <laughs> nice to come with her, though. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. So um, the reason that we are here is, as you are aware, last year we came before the Finance Committee to get $3,300 for the painting of the nursery school. It was a reserve fund transfer done in fiscal 18. That work was not completed. Um, and when Ashley came aboard, um, we discovered that there was a few additional steps that needed to be taken um, due to um, needing a lead inspection on the building. And so the process basically started over last week. And so we're here, the, the $3,300 that you gave us last year is actually gonna close out because we did not enter into a contract with a vendor prior to June 30th. So we can't encumber those funds. Uh, so we're here asking for $11,460. 
And I think I sent, I don't know if everybody, did you forward the email to everyone, Kathy? Okay, so there's two, um, there's two vendors that need to be paid. Um, one is the, um, the company that went in and did, um, actually I'll have Ashley talk about what that company did today. And then the second quote is for the company that's gonna actually paint the building. And the goal is to, um, to have this project completed before school starts, which is the first week of September. So Ashley can give you more information on that. Mm -hmm. So regarding the fees that um, we would incur, today there was a site visit for ASAP Environmental to perform the site survey. Then they will need to return when the work is completed. So there is another charge for that visit. And during that visit, they'll collect seven samples for um, testing to confirm there's no lead. So basically they are gonna scrape and paint the outside and their concern is just the children on the inside and it's regulated through the state. So we have to uh, resample it and receive a final letter of deleading to make sure that we're in compliance. Okay. So lead scarcity, has the building been tested before? Is it possible? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. So, so it it's happened. been tested and then we created the, uh, they completed the um, abatement to that. Um, that was done in, there was some work done in 2000, between 2005 and 2007. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure the records for those. Oh, that would be mm -hmm. So that was all resolved at that point. Then they got a certificate of being lead free and that certificate was valid unless there was any chipping or painting, or chipping, cracking, peeling present. So in our evaluation of the building, we were observed that. So then we're bound by the APA regulations through the state to begin the process to work with the correct licensed providers. So is the sampling going to be done prior to the painting being done? Are they going to come in and take samples, um, paint chips so off? So the it? interior sampling was done years ago and it, and it passed and that abatement work was done. On the exterior, they don't need to sample it prior to it because of the age of the building, because it's built before 1971 through the um, Massachusetts guidelines, they treat it as if it is lead contaminated. So they perform the paint work and then they will resample the inside window seals, doorways, walls below four feet in the common areas. So there's seven places that they have um, identified are as high risk areas, so they'll resample them and confirm that there's no contaminants. So this is interior sampling, is that what you're saying? The, inter the sampling occurs interior, but it's as a cause of the exterior work, because with the painting, scraping, their concern is if it was to come in through ventilation oh. or any of the settling through the air particulate. So I'm just curious, and I know it was, I was gonna say 12 to 15 years ago, we had done lead abatement, mm -hmm. and we had done the testing. <coughs> so every time we do work, we have to do testing? Um, as long as there's no paint, uh, uh, flaking, chipping, anything like that, we are covered, but because we um, exhausted the life of the paint and didn't paint prior to any of those things happening, now we have to go back and uh, start the testing process again. When was the last time the exterior of the building was painted, Kevin? I do not have record of that in my records. I have the documents on hand from when they performed this work. When did we tear off the front door and we placed the whole front door in canopy? That, that was in that 12 to 15 year ago range. I, I don't know. I didn't mean I didn't go back and research what we've done other than I know that the building needs to be painted and there's a, um, the school needs to be recertified um, the school year and so that's one of the things that needs to be done for that recertification so it, it, it's imperative that we move forward with this project so I, I don't know I, 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 I guess my question is is this is so it's not a one and done thing so in another 15 years if we have to redo the building we have to get another lead test done not necessarily so, no. do, not if not if there's no flaking or peeling so but I, I guess my point is at some point they haven't had lead and paint in a long long time and so if, we're, if we even have chipping 15 or 20 years from now, there's a strong likelihood that there's no lead in that paint. Are we still need to go through the process? Right now, there's a strong likelihood that there is lead in that paint. I went by that building, and it's on the east side of that building. It's peeling pretty heavily, but the rest of the building was never scraped down to the bare wood. There's paint on that building that's probably original to that building. Yes. I'm just that's my feeling. No, no, I'm, I'm not what I saying that if we, I walked if, around the building, I looked at it. I understand, what you, but my point, I guess, is if we go through the process of getting 100% of the lead abated right now, and we have to paint it in 15 or 20 years, do we have to do the same thing again? 
Is that so the minor cost is really the inspection and revalidation that nothing is present, and that protects not only the, the students but the people that are interacting in that facility. Um, but through this process, we'll be issued another letter of full de full deletting compliance, which will cover us for any period of time. It doesn't have an end point as long as none of those things are present. So if we kept the building on a regular maintenance schedule and painted it again prior to any of these things happening, then we wouldn't incur the cost of said inspection that we're doing. They would consider that paint to be encapsulated by the, mm -hmm. the new paint that's over. Right. Okay. Have we gotten bids from anybody besides this contractor? So we've had some difficulty even obtaining anyone to be willing to bid the work because of the location and the fact that there are children involved. Um, what does that have to do with anything? Okay, so we co uh, compiled a list of, we have spoken to, there are four other contractors that went out to the facility. Um, the one that previously provided the bid is non-responsive to date, as of this week, still attempting to contract him. Lavalley Home Property Services, A-Team Incorporated, and Michael L. Wills Painting. Um, a team is not able to do it just based on their calendar. They're not accepting work until 2019. Um, La Valley Home Services, they're not able to offer the estimate because of the nature of the job. And um, Michael L. Will, uh, Wales painting the same. He's not interested because it is a school. Um, I've gone through the license database through Massachusetts for people who are able to perform this work. It was very difficult to, even with these people, to get them to come consider it, look at it. Because this is the busiest time of year for most contractors as well. You have a special vendor list just for schools? Uh, they have to maintain a license that would either start with an LR, a DR, or a DC, which is their level of ability to handle lead paint. It's all heavily regulated through um, the Department of Standards. So not just any like regular house painter can do this work. Um, any contractor who does this sends their employees annually for a lead test. They have to hold a special certificate of insurance to be able to perform the work. So it's not the fact that they're students, it's the fact that there's lead involved. Well, from many contractors, first lead, but then secondly, the nature of the building, that it's students and that there is a higher chance and that because of their age range and is it's more of a difficult. risk. Yeah, the risk is much higher. Wow. They're, all, they're all under six. Yeah, they're all under six. Yeah. So those are the ones who are most at risk for lead. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Barbara, if, if we um if if we knew that the vendor was not gonna paint the place and so that thir the three the thirty three hundred dollars that just goes back mm -hmm. um, and not get and does not get used, could we not have included this in the budget request if we knew that it still had to get done? So we were under the um, opinion that that vendor that was in initially had quoted on the project was going to uh, do the work once the school once the school was out for the year. And so when school got out, there were attempts to contact that vendor to come in and start the job. And they were non-responsive to phone calls. Uh, and then you know, as time progressed, and then Ashley was coming on board, this was one of the first things that she was assigned to do. And as she, you know, started researching it, there was more involved with just going, hiring a painter to go and paint the building. Mm -hmm. And so this is where we stand at this point. So when we did budget, I, I didn't know that the, you know, that they the weren't going quote to was paint. going to be non-responsive. Right, right, right. Got it. There's a seventy-five hundred dollar difference between that quote and this quote. <laughs> there is, but I also felt, and I think I, during budget season or when we came for the the uh, reserve fund transfer, it seemed like I think some of you actually commented that that price seemed awfully low. Low. Yeah, yeah I think I have Ridiculously that. Ridiculously low. Yes. Yeah. And this this one does seem more reasonable in line with painting a building. I just wish it was spec'd out a little better than it just says all bare wood will be primed and then there'll be two coats of Benjamin Moore or Sherwin Williams high quality paints. That's not a spec. That's just, that's, that bothers me that that's very loose, but. What were you looking for? I'm I curious. was looking for this being scraped and primed and specified the paint that was gonna be primed with and a finished coat of paint should be one coat over one coat of primer. And he's got two coats of finished paint over uh, bare wood that's been spot primed and that just, 
I if, see. I, if I had given me this quote, I would have told him that I didn't. I would have sent it back. Got it. I just feel that's not a, a specked out quote. And I've done this type of work mm -hmm. for a living, so. So is there anything that you can do to rectify if, that? He's the only person that's going to bid on it. Well, if that's that was the if that's the way that we would like the scope designed, he's been um, very willing to work with us. So that is feedback that can be given to him, and I'm sure we can discuss making that modification, but still keeping it. I think you should spec out the, what he's going to prime the building with and what he specifically was going to use. Mm -hmm. I just think this is a very yeah. loose quote. And yeah. also, does it include any minor repairs? Because sometimes they will. No, it specifically well, it says, says that, it doesn't. It, says it, doesn't, it does actually. not. It, it says, says it any does additional not? carpentry is not included. It said any loose wood would be ma nailed back, but if, if say one was rotted and had yeah. it, it's not, no. As we were talking before, if it's done right, it should last 12 to 15 years. Mm -hmm. If it's done wrong, it'll last three to five years. So what are the comments? Have you, have you seen any rotted wood or anything that might potentially need so we went and inspected the corners. There is some splitting and peeling on the corners. There is some separation, uh, but it doesn't seem that it would be anything that's traveling the distance of the building or the length. It's more so isolated to the two corners on the main street side of the building. There but if he's not going to re repair it for at a cost, right? Is that an additional cost that you have to incur? It would be. Yeah, he would have to bring in a carpenter or someone to do that. So do you have the money to cover that? We have part? some money for repairs to that building, yes. Mm -hmm. So then you're just asking for the amount to cover this quote? Correct. And the inspections. In, yeah. And the inspections. Well, the inspections, yeah. That's, that's somebody else completely. Right, but yes. it's, yes. it's Two included. vendors, right, yeah. It's included. Yeah. Do we have any mechanisms in place for the future to maintain the paint? the level that we don't have to worry about reinspection. <clears throat> um, so part of uh, my appointment to the town was to develop the building schedule and maintenance schedule. So that's something that um, as I get more involved in my role, we do plan to roll that out in the long term for not just that building, but other buildings throughout the town. Do you have any other questions? Is there a motion then to? I don't, I don't think the amount of money is un, unreasonable for it if the job's done correctly for that, yeah. Well, yeah, it's a pretty big it's building. A, it's, a, it's a reasonable yeah. amount. I looked at the building, the size it looks. Oh, I've been in the building many, many times. <laughs> yeah. Would you like to make a motion then? I'll make a motion. I'll mm -hmm. second. That amount, 11,460. Yes. Could you be specific, please? Oh. <laughs> I've got to find the. Yeah, yeah, okay, I don't have it in front of me. Here we go, eleven thousand four hundred and sixty dollars. And are you seconding I'll that? Second. Yes. Any further discussion? All in favor? It's six zero. Thank you. Thank you. And welcome again. I think you're gonna be a very busy person. <laughs> <laughs> You've been long desired, so you know. Yes. I enjoyed meeting you, but I hope I don't have to see you very often. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, we're very friendly. nice. I will visit you on other circumstances. Okay. Okay. All right, do you want to take these? Because you know I'm going to forget them. Sure. <laughs> Did you tell her that we bite or something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was on day seven. I'm not bringing her. I'm asking you to just go to the finance committee. It doesn't come from the municipal world, so. <laughs> uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now we can go back. Oh, and there are no other reserve fund transfers. Thank goodness, so early in the year. So we can go back to number one, reorganization of the committee. You can throw me out if you want. So, um, so are you I asking? I guess we'll start with the chair. You have, you, are you asking for recommendations for the chair? Are you open, yeah. are you open to re-election? So can I, move, could I move forward Kathy Neal's name for the chair I'll position? second that. Quick vote before she backs up. <laughs> so I move we close the nominations for chair. Is there a second? Second. I'll second. second. Oh, All, right. okay. All in favor of closing nominations? Unanimous. I'm sorry, can you guys? You guys are going fast. <laughs> so, Joni, you, well, you forwarded the motion to close. close the nomination for chairs after Joni and Jen yep. made a recommendation for chair. And who seconded his motion to close? Chair. Chair. Oh. <laughs> and then you and me. Right, you you made the motion for Right, Kathy. I got that, and I got that. <laughs> then I got lost in this. <laughs> this went fast. Yes. All in favor? 
Any opposed? Any opposed? I'll abstain. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so it's five z zero one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, vice chair. So why is that always a vice? Can I move the motion to accept John, uh, Jim Waddick for vice chair? Why can't you? I, I am. <laughs> is there a second? I'll move to close nominations for vice chair. I'll second that. All in favor of closing nominations? Nobody's opposed. Okay, all in favor of Jim as vice chair? Opposed? Abstaining? I guess. Well, thank you, Jim. I'm going to rely on you heavily. <laughs> you better not resign. <laughs> <laughs> Just hope she doesn't stick you with the book. <laughs> that would be a learning process. <laughs> yeah. But you know, actually, Barbara suggested we have a subcommittee for that. I, I thought I oh. would be all in favor of that, and I would put myself on. It. Well, we kind of had we one did, already, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Well, until in Germany. Until someone went to Germany. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I still help. We'll go to any one of And now we need a. Um, I, I, we call it a clerk or secretary, recording secretary. Secretary, you? recording secretary. That's what I was. Yeah. I mean, I'd was. like to place in nomination <laughs> the name of Joni White. <laughs> I'll second that. <laughs> close nominations. Oh, I'll close them. I'll move the close nominations. I'll second secretary. that. All in favor of closing nominations? Opposed? Oh, it's 6 0. Okay, all in favor of Joni as, uh, as secretary? <laughs> oh, stating 5 0 1. Thank you. All right. Good, we got that done. Phew. All right. Okay, we have one meeting minutes, the June 28th, which I sent out today. So we will still be up to date. We've been really pretty good about that this year. So, did everybody get those? I'll just okay. note ahead that I'll be upstate. Yes. <laughs> oh, and Jared and Karen weren't here either. <laughs> I guess so the three of us will be voting. I was there, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So just the three of us? Yeah. Can we do that? We'll just yeah. 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 You have a quorum. You can do whatever you need. Yes, yeah, we can. As long as we have a majority of three of us, right? So I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes of the June 28th meeting as presented. I second. Any discussion, changes, amendments? I look pretty straightforward when I read them. Oh, hearing none, all in favor? Three zero. Three zero three. Three zero three, yes, thank you. Thank you. Oh my, yes. Sorry. I need to be you quiet. guys all abstain. I, I was no, that's good, that's good. Side of the meeting now. Okay, good. Any new business? Old business? Public access? <laughs> and I believe we probably I did try to pin down a time for the uh, town, a special town meeting, which will probably be in the fall due to the uh, oh, right. um, expiration of the moratorium on the zoning for marijuana, but I do not have a date yet. I thought it might be in October, so stay tuned. I know I talked with Jean just before he ended. Oh, she okay. said she's turned in, her, or I guess, her proposal to this board of selectmen and oh, okay, town administrator good. today. So, I mean, they'll have to go through the discussion in the public hearing process. Yeah, the public but, hearing it's, but it has started, so. Okay, good, yeah. Does that have to go through another public hearing? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Does the Finance Committee have any role with uh, selecting a new town administrator? You can. No, but you can, uh, you can there was an advertisement for um, people to be on the committee. Oh. There, there was something in the telegram this morning, too. In fact, I think too. you have to put your name in. Fairly soon. Yeah, by Friday this week. Friday. Friday. Okay. And they said Monday night that candidates are going to be here to be interviewed on Monday or Tuesday by the uh, selectmen, which I think that's what it said. That could be, that oh, could be okay. wrong. Yeah. That was, yeah, that was candidates the candidates for the committee. Yeah. Right. All right. Oh, okay. you, I was, I no, thought no. you were telling me town I mean, that's really fast. No, that no, was, no, no. Yeah, I, no. It was confusing in the telegram the way they worded it. Uh -oh. When is he um, officially leaving? I think it's September. September 13th, I think it's. Around there. So that's really not that long. That's a Thursday. That's a Thursday. Oh. Oh. That's, an odd time. that's oh. really just a few weeks away. Yes. So th Month? they'll mm -hmm. likely have an interim? I would think. I haven't really seen anything on that. Last time we went through this, they had an interim. Well, the first time they had it for six months, and the last time 
It went twice. They extended her contract right. twice. Is that Suzanne? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She That's was here a while. Yeah. She was here like eight, maybe nine months. Yep. Because yeah, I think the charter says, is it three months? And then you extend it three? Yeah, or, so. or is it yeah, six to begin? Like I, I forget. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I would think they would probably get an interim. So. No, we didn't. So is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion. Oh, so move. No, you second now. She already moved. Oh, okay. I didn't hear that. Sorry. All in favor? Six zero zero. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice rest of the summer. <laughs> so, it, it, if the special town meeting is October, aren't be in bed you yet. Think? isn't that a little no, early? That's the, that's the one perk I have. These meetings. By the time we get home, they're in bed. They're asleep. <laughs>